Hey everybody, welcome back to another one of my videos. Today is uh, uh, Tuesday. I'm kind of foggy mind and stuff because I'm kind of a little stressed out. I'm making a, I was making a video for you guys from on Monday and on yesterday, but I had to stop making the doggone video. It was a video I was taking y'all, uh, it was going to be a all day vlog video. I was going to take y'all, I was going to take y'all to the doctor's office with me because it was time for me to do my weight in again. And I haven't did that in a while with you guys. But as I had did the uh, morning routine, wash my face and all like that, I did that part. And then I was going to get ready and do I was going to put my makeup on and my jewelry on and do uh, what I got on for today. What stopped me was I had saw some dirt on my bookshelf and stuff at the bottom. And it <laughs> don't supposed to be no dirt in my doggone house. And there was a lot of dirt and trash and stuff on my bookshelf. And I'm like, what in the world did this, this stuff come from? And uh, so... You guys, on Sunday, I was laying up here. You know, Saturdays and Sundays is movie day for me. Movie day and spa day for me. And uh, on Sunday, I had was watching uh, some movies and stuff. Laying in my bed. It was late on that evening, about five something or six something. And all of a sudden, I heard a boom noise. A loud boom noise. I ain't know if it was a firework. I ain't know if it was a firecracker. You kids over here in these apartments still have fireworks and stuff. So... I didn't know it was a firework or a gun. Then all of a sudden, next, I heard this whoosh noise. And it scared Stella. She ran up on the bed. I hit the floor. I, and I ran out of my room doing a duck crawl uh, to Justin's room, telling him to hit the floor and stuff. So I recognized it was a gun. So I did the duck walk in the living room, looked at the blinds, didn't see nobody. Then I went to my patio door. And opened the blinds up a little bit. And I saw this young man with this brown uh, hooded jacket on. Looking both ways and stuff. I don't know if he was looking for somebody or what. Or making sure that nobody didn't see him shooting that gun. And then he put his hoodie over his head. And then he went back through that gate that's between my apartment and the townhouse next to me. And stuff. So... I didn't think nothing else about it. So I told Justin to get up and stuff. And uh, he can get back up and everything. Everything's okay. So that day went on. And like I said, on Monday. Monday came. This the results right here. You know back then, uh, I think two years ago, I showed y'all a video that the people was having a shootout when I was living in that house. And one of those bullets, them straight bullets came through my kitchen window and stuff. By golly, it happened again, you guys. Another stray bullet came through my bedroom wall. It ricocheted off of something and came, but it didn't come through the window or nothing. It came through the wall, the baseboard wall. I'm going to have pictures after this video. I'm going to have pictures at the end of the video so I can show you everything. And, and uh, so... I was so stressed out. I like so how I found out that somebody had had the bullet came to my house. So when I saw that trash, I looked behind my uh my uh, my dresser. My big dresser is next to that wall, and it's, that's a window right there. That's a window right there, and I'm covering that window with my uh, with my big dresser and stuff. So I looked behind that dresser right there to see. Was any well, did anything happen right there? First, I looked at my ceiling to make sure nothing <laughs> the ceiling didn't fall in or something or something wrong with the ceiling and stuff. But with well, nothing real right there, and then something told me between that dresser and my bookshelf right there, and uh, I got my nail kit and my hair uh, my hair uh, boxes and stuff. So I moved all of that, and bam, right there on the floorboard is that bullet hole. I like Lord Jesus. I didn't see the bullet nowhere. I said so. Something told me look down at my nail kit, and the bullet went through my nail kit. You guys, and 
I took all the stuff off the off, off of that and got the nail kit and put the nail kit on my bed and opened it up to find the bullet and stuff. It had damaged my nail, my uh, uh my nail polish in there. It damaged some of my nail polish and messed them up. Stuff was waste inside the kit. Then it went through, it went through my uh one of my nail polish removers. I had three pol three nail polish removers. It went through one of them, and that was wasted in there too. And stuff. When I picked it up, I stuff the waste. That stuff was all on my hands and everything. And then I was so upset. I didn't see the bullet nowhere in there. And I looked on the other side. See, they go to the other side because there's two sides in that uh, case, and nothing went on that side. So I called my son Jason. I was so upset. I was crying, you guys, because I like, know what, Jason, this, this crap didn't happen to me again. Another bullet, straight bullet, that came through my house again. But I thank God that me and my family is okay. So he said, Ma, call the police and make a report and stuff. I said, and I said, because I'm, I'm waiting on the office to open up because I had to make a report to them too. So I was taking pictures and everything. But I said, I kind of told him I can't find the bullet nowhere. He said, the bullet got to be in there somewhere. He said, maybe just take everything out of the bookcase. So I started sweeping it up and stuff. Then I thought about it. I said, maybe it was in the little trash I swept off of the, uh, the bookshelf. I looked in the garbage can because there wasn't nothing in the garbage can but that little trash. So I looked through that little trash, no bullet. So I told him, no, no bullet. Still no bullet. So I called the, po the uh, police. It was so, I called 911. You guys, the line was busy, so I had to be on hold. I was like, Lord Jesus, they playing a little music and stuff. I was like, God. I thank God there was nothing seriously wrong with me and stuff. Because I was on hold with 911. I was like, Lord. So after that, they finally got me. I finally got them and stuff. So I told them what was going on. So. The police was here real fast. I gave them the name of the apartments, my address, and my apartment number and stuff. My name and my phone number and all like that. So the police were here. Well, I was like, well, I told Jason. So I come, up, I hung up with them and I called Jason back. I said, well, it may, they might take their time because this is not a really an emergency. And I, because I didn't think that was really an emergency or nothing. So, but it was to them. So before I knew it, next five minutes, they was knocking on my door. And I had to put the dog, I had to put Stella up and stuff. And... So I opened the door up, and I'm, I'm, I thank God that my house always clean and stuff. It's, my house, well, my house is never dirty, but sometimes it'd be a little, little stuff here on there and little stuff here on there. But that day, it was big spots shining and smelling good. So they came first. The uh, the first guy came in first, and everything. And I explained to him, and he said, "Where is it at?" So I brought him on to the back door, back into the back of uh, my bedroom. Only thing was messed up on my bed. Uh, I had another blanket on there and stuff, and that was it because I had my clothes on, getting ready for the doctor's office and stuff, and I was dressed to go to the doctor's office. So then all of a sudden, the other guy came in and stuff, and I was explaining to him. He was taking pictures, and we was looking for the bullet. I told him, "This is unsolved. I cannot find the bullet." We looked, and then he found. As he was looking at the uh, nail kit, he found a uh, exit hole. In the nail kit that it came out on the back way. So we said it got to be at over there by the bookshelf. So I moved my bookshelf. Some of the stuff was falling and stuff, but I didn't care. I was putting it back on there and I just fixed it back later. I moved the bookshelf. I, we looked at the wall, make sure it didn't go to my son's room or nothing. The wall was still perfect. Nothing went on the floor. So I moved my look, my I moved my small computer desk. With nothing back there. I shook the uh my printer. And looked up under that, but nothing back there. You guys, the bullet had disappeared. So we talked, and he wrote everything down. I took a picture of the report because they don't have paper no more. They got this little app on their phone, and you have to take a picture of it and stuff. So I took a picture of it, and he said, whenever you find the bullet, call us back, and we'll come back out and get it. I said, okay. And so I then I took the, uh, I went down to the office because, they opened up at 9, so I waited a little after 9. Then I went down to the office and got the pictures and told the lady down there what had happened on Sunday and such such and thing. And so she gave me the manager, uh, Dara was busy, so she gave me the manager's email address because she going to tell me to email her the stuff and all like that. So 
I did that when I got back home and everything. And then about 1.30, I was puzzled. I like, because I, I, when I got back home, I still looked behind my little pictures and everything. No bullet. I like, where in the, is this bullet at? Because it's in this room somewhere in that corner. So, about that time, I looked at the legs on my bookshelf. I said, I haven't checked the legs on there. So I went back over there and I put the nail kit back in that spot. I was scared. I was, I'm scared to stand in that spot. You see, I'm in. A, I'm over here on my the the thing is on my bed and I'm sitting right here by my closet because I'm scared to sit over there right now because of what happened and stuff. So that's why I'm sitting here right now, you guys, because I'm scared to sit over there and everything. Ooh, Lord, the covers get me. So I rub my hands up and down on each leg until I got to the third one. And I said, get the hell out of here. It's a hole in my in the leg. So I twisted it around. It was a big hole. The bullet went through there. And it didn't go keep on through. It just went in there and just fell and stuff. And that's where it stopped it when it hit that uh when it hit that leg. I guess when it hit that leg and fell in there, the leg twisted and you couldn't tell because the hole was facing on the inside and stuff instead of outside. So I said, okay, that's why we couldn't, we didn't know it because that hole, that part of that leg was facing on the outside. And when that bullet hit it, it turned it into the inside and stuff. So I took, I got clothes, I got my clothes basket and stuff and took all my stuff off of there and laid the bookshelf on the bed and took the bottom off and everything. And that's when my son, Jason, had called me back. And I told him, child, I done found this doggone bullet. I know where it's at. He said, where? I said, inside the bookshelf leg. So when I took everything off of there and I unscrewed it and stuff, and I shook it and the, the bullet was in there. So I turned it upside down. It came out. And this time I learned my lesson. I did not touch the bullet because the lady, the police lady last time had a, a heart attack because I touched the bullet and stuff and messed up all the prints and stuff on there. So this time I went and got my, my gloves and a Ziploc bag. And I put the gloves on and put put it in the Ziploc bag. And I called the police back and let them know that I found the bullet. I took a picture of the bullet. The bullet going to be on here too. I took a picture of the bullet and my broken leg. And that's going to be on there too on the pictures. And then I sent those two pictures to my to the office too. And I emailed them to her, too, so she could see them. And she said, make sure you call the police. I said, I did already. So he finally came back out again. The, the same people came back out that was there this morning, that morning. And he said, mm, you put it in a Ziploc bag. I said, yeah. He said, thank you. I said, you're welcome. And he took pictures of that and wrote that in his report, too. And then he took pictures of the broken leg and, and, and everything. So he didn't stay long because that's all he came for. And then today, the detective called me, and I had to go through all, everything that happened on Sunday and on Monday. And me and him, we sat there and we talked and everything. And I said, these young folks, these young folks, baby, they need to sit their butts down somewhere before they get killed. And they think, because they got a little dog on gun, they big, bad, and tough. What they need to do is send their little black butts over there to a wreck and bring out I'm at people home and let them handle them cuckoo people over there. Because these these I, I, these young folks these days, they think they got to sell everything with a gun. A gun going to sell every dog on thing. If you that big and bad, you don't need that gun, baby. Just put your fist up and do like what we used to do back in the days. Well, I ain't never fought, so I don't know how to fight. But what people used to do in the back of the day, fight with their fists. This with they this with they gun right here, built a fist or a stick or something. But now... They can't do nothing without a doggone gun. They got to shoot, shoot, shoot. And them bullets don't have a name on it. And so my son was scared and stuff. The police made sure he was okay and stuff. Because when he saw that bullet hole, it freaked him out. It, it's still freaking me out. Because last night when I was watching TV, all of a sudden I heard that pop, 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 pop. I thought it was a gun. So I hit the floor. And my son, he hit the floor. I told him, don't hit the floor by the wall where the wheel your window said. Hit the floor by your closet and go up in your closet and stuff. Because if a bullet come through there, it's going to hit your bed or whatever and stuff. That's what's going to slow it down is your bed and everything. So, go the other way. 
go the opposite, go on the other side and everything. And me, I'm not going to stay in my from now on. I'm not going to stay in this bedroom. I go in the hallway, into the bathroom. That's where I go to until I think everything is safe. But last night, it was no gun. It was fireworks. But when I told the detective, it's just some little bad kids across over there that comes over here and do their little dirt and stuff. It's some little bad kids where I live at too, but the rest of them stay over there because in their apartments over there where they, where they live at, you know, but townhouses and stuff. Where I stay at is townhouses and apartments mixed together. So they come over here with apartments at and play dice, smoke their weed, play their music or whatever, hang out and shake their booties and stuff over here because they can't do it over there because they ain't got nowhere to hide out it over there. But over here, they got something, they got places to hide out it. And that's what I told the detective on the phone today. But you guys, I know there's no place that's, that you can go that's safe. There's no place. And I mean, there is no place where you can go is safe. Anywhere you go is dangerous and stuff. And they're going and you can't run from these little bad kids and stuff because they're everywhere. Some are decent, some are bad and stuff. But I just thank God that my I raised me and my mom raised my kids to be good boys and stuff. Yeah, my oldest one had trouble sometimes, but he didn't change and he didn't grew up. And I'm glad of that. You know, I love all three of my boys and everything, but I'm afraid for this next generation, and that's my grandchildren. I'm afraid, I'm still afraid for my children too, and I'm definitely afraid for my grandkids. That's why I'm back exercising and everything so I can be in good health to stay here a little longer. But the way this world is, and these fools are with these doggone guns, I'm just scared, so I'm, I pray every day. Now I'm praying more. I pray about four or five times a day, but now it's 10 times a day. I'm praying for my family. I'm praying for my sisters and brothers. I'm praying for my kids. I'm praying for my grandkids. I'm praying for everybody. And now I'm going to order me on Amazon this prayer journal and stuff because I need everything. Because these children, these little kids are a son of a gun. They, but... Like the detective said today, he prayed that it's a fingerprint on that doggone bullet. And I said, I'm praying too because I want that little son of a gun be put in jail and everything. Because this stuff right here needs to stop, you guys. It really do needs to stop. And I hope to God y'all pray for me because I'm scared. I'm scared to be in my own bedroom sometimes. Because these bullets can come through these walls and through every doggone thing. That's a non-stop. And sometimes, I, last night, I was so scared, I, but I prayed last night before I went to bed three times. I prayed three times. Then I wrote in my journal and prayed in my journal, you guys, before I went to bed last night, to please, Lord, let me wake up the next day. Please, let me wake up the next day. And when I woke up this morning, I thank God three times again. And I've been talking to him on and off all day. Because this stuff is ridiculous. It's ridiculous, you guys. But I'm not going to hold you long because my, this phone right here has not been charged and stuff. Because I forgot to put on charge yesterday because of all this uh, this stuff happened yesterday. Because I both had a block. So I'm going to have a block, a block for y'all on Thursday because I called my doctor, my weight specialist doctor, and we changed it to Thursday. So I'm going to try this again on Thursday. So, I hope I can do it Thursday for you guys. And I did some more exercise today. It was a little bit better, you guys, but I was still out of breath. <laughs> but let me go. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, and share my videos. And, and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Have a blessed day. Bye.